I need some help. Please, anybody out there watching this video, just anybody, doesn't matter who you are, if you saw WWE Extreme Rules pay-per-view 2021, please, I beg you, Help me, help me to make sense of this. Help me to make sense of what has gone down. <sighs> oh my Lord Jesus. Mm. Oh, Lord. Mm. <sighs> Just when you think WWE couldn't do anything more dumber than what they usually do. <laughs> Just when you think they can't take it up a notch on the stupidity and the garbage finishes, Vince McMahon and all, or, or somebody in the creative team, you know, Nick Khan, somebody, has the nerve to go, hold my beer, and the rest is history. Oh, man. I just... <sighs> Y'all just 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 bear with me. Bear with me for a moment. I, I, I'm a, I'm gonna get to, I'm gonna get to the the topic, but just just please just bear with me for a moment. Just bear with me for a moment. Thank you for your patience. Woosa! Woosa! <sighs> Let me just clean my glasses right quick. Ugh. Well, just finished watching the WWE Extreme Rules pay-per-view. <laughs> oh, man. I guess I might as well just try to get through this as quickly as I, as I can. Already got folks messaging me on Facebook and just, yeah. Um, WWE Extreme Rules was in Columbus, Ohio, I believe. And let's just let's just go over things. So <clears throat> we did. They did end up having a pre-show match, which turned out to be Liv Morgan versus Carmella, which I thought was going to be on the main card, but nope. They not only put this on the pre-show, but they just tossed in just a random match 
to kick off the main card just out of nowhere. Like, they literally announced it during this pre-show, and I'll get to that in a second. But... <clears throat> We had Liv Morgan versus Carmella as the pre-show. Of course, before the match, Carmella would brag about her being the hottest woman, and she's hot and Liv's not, and just then they started. Then they started the match, <clears throat> and I guess it was just pretty much back and forth. But Liv Morgan got the victory, hitting Oblivion on Carmella to get the win. Liv Morgan looking strong, coming out with the win. I just hope she gets more matches and such going forward. Kind of a bummer this was the pre-show. But anyway, moving into the main card. So they announced during the pre-show a six-man tag match to, to kick off to pretty much start the main card, which ended up being the New Day versus Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, and Omos. Just randomly. Random six-man tag. So no, no title defense of the WWE Championship that Big E currently holds. But nah, just the New Day versus <clears throat> Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, and Omos. Just, just randomly. No build up. No nothing. <clears throat> I was bored. This match bored the crap out of me. Wasn't really exciting or entertaining. I mean, there was a little bit of miscommunication between AJ Styles and, and Bobby Lashley. <clears throat> which ended up becoming their downfall. Ended up leading to Bobby Lashley accidentally spearing AJ Styles. Big E capitalizes by hitting Bobby Lashley with the big ending and getting the 1-2-3. New Day wins. Boring match. No build-up. Just random match just thrown into the main card. But I guess that's what they had to do because they weren't going to put it on the pre-show. <clears throat> Whatever. Whatever. The next up, you had the SmackDown Tag Team titles on the line. Had the Usos defend the titles against the Street Profits. This was actually a pretty good match. I was digging this match. Um... Montez Ford had his ribs taped up, and of course they were eventually removed. But there were a lot of good spots, a lot of near falls, um, a lot of high-flying action. This was actually a good match. And, you know, the Usos and the Street Profits have great in-ring chemistry, so thankfully this didn't disappoint. And <clears throat> it took... A double super kick from the Usos, plus double Uso splashes onto uh, Montez Ford. And the Usos were able to retain the SmackDown Tag Team titles. But it was a great match, though. I will say that. It was a, it was a great match. These two tag teams have good chemistry in the ring. So I'm not going to hate on that. I'm not going to hate on that. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a tag match we've seen before. But they have good in-ring in chemistry with each other. So, I, I could dig it. It was, it was a good match. But the Usos retain. Oh, man. And then next, you had the, the Raw Women's Championship match. As Charlotte Flair defended against Alexa Bliss. A lot of what took place in this match really just 
made no sense to me. Charlotte Flair pretty much had a, made Alexa Bliss look like a wimp. Alexa Bliss didn't do any hip, hypnotizing. No fiend moments, no dark, scary moments, no nothing. No trippy stuff, nothing during this match. And, and Charlotte pretty much just annihilated her. Honestly, if it wasn't for the length that this match went, it probably, <laughs> it probably would have almost looked like Charlotte squashed Alexa Bliss. And that's sad to even imagine, especially with the with the gimmick Alexa Bliss is using. Charlotte Flair took advantage of distracting Alexa Bliss, getting the Lily doll, tossing it at Alexa Bliss. She catches it and then eats a boot. Which eventually leads to a natural selection. It gets the one, two, three. Now, I know she didn't hit her with the slap on the figure eight. But, and then afterwards, to add insult to injury, Charlotte Flair takes the Lily doll and just rips it apart. Like cotton all over the place. Just rips it all up. And just... You know, <clears throat> and just leaves. I mean, Alexa tried to get in one last bit of offense after the match, but it really didn't matter because her doll was ripped up. And Charlotte walked away. And then it was just, <clears throat> it was like 10, 15 minutes or so of Alexa Bliss throwing a tantrum with Alka-Seltzer pouring out of her mouth. Because you could clearly see there was Alka-Seltzer in her mouth. And her picking up the ruined and shredded remains of Lily. As she made her way out of the ring and up the ramp. So this, this character who you've built to have like mind control and, and hip, hypnotism. All these dark powers and stuff like that, you know, with how she was able to control Reggie and Nia Jax and was able to scare Shayna Baszler. None of none of that happened in this match. No, no, none of that even came out during this match. <clears throat> and Charlotte Flair made Alexa Bliss look like a wimp in this match. But, don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I would say maybe this will be a continuous feud, but with the draft coming up on Friday, I, I doubt that. So, yeah. <clears throat> Next up, we had the triple threat match for the United States Championship, where Damian Priest defended against Jeff Hardy and Sheamus. This was a decent match. I mean, I like Jeff Hardy. I like, you know, I like Damian Priest. Sheamus is all right, but he's getting kind of old on me. But for the most part, this was this was a pretty good match. But there was a botch here and there. But I was okay with the match. Um, of course, Damian Priest was able to uh, retain. It's championship. Afterwards, you know, good sportsmanship between him and Jeff Hardy. It was like, hey, it's all cool. Of course, Sheamus had the mask off. Of course, his nose was all taped up and everything. But that was a pretty cool spot where um, Damian Priest had Sheamus covered. And uh, Jeff Hardy hit the swanton bomb. The only thing that was really just lackluster, it was 
Damian Priest got a roll-up finish. He got a roll-up finish. And just... That just that's just kind of a weak finish for him. You know, just a roll up finish. Uh kind of weak. But it was it was an okay match, just aside from the, the weak finish and a and a botch here or there. It was it was an okay match. I definitely was more into that match than I was into the six man tag that started off the main the main card. But Damian Priest, still your United States champion. And then next up, <clears throat> you have the SmackDown Women's Championship match. Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair. Now, you know, this was a good match. You know, these two ladies going at it. Becky Lynch, this was only her second match back. Of course, you know, she had the 26-second squash at SummerSlam. But... It was actually really good to see these two ladies have a match and go at it. Both did very well. Good chemistry in the ring. I was really enjoying it. And then, enter Sasha Banks. That's right. Sasha Banks comes down, attacks Bianca Belair, and then when it seemed like Becky Lynch was like, yeah, we're cool, we're cool. Sasha attacks Becky Lynch, and then all three ladies are, are trying to get some on each other. <clears throat> so, it really makes me wonder where this is going to go, especially, once again, with the draft coming up on Friday. Like, whatever they might do is, is probably going to really seriously lead into strong implications or SummerSlam, or not SummerSlam, Survivor Series in November. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And and who knows? Could end up getting Becky Lynch versus Charlotte again. They do another champion versus champion situation. Could get that. But, it'll be interesting to see, you know, where Bianca goes where Sasha goes <clears throat> excuse me a friend of mine was telling me um he could see Bianca Belair going to Raw which wouldn't surprise me I personally could see Shayna Baszler coming to SmackDown but I don't know. We'll we'll see. Now, if Oscar and Shayna Baszler came to SmackDown, that that'd be pretty cool. That that would definitely be pretty cool. But we'll see what happens with the draft. But um, Bianca Belair wins by disqualification. But even though she won by DQ, title doesn't doesn't change hands on a DQ. So Becky Lynch still SmackDown Women's Champion, which doesn't surprise me. I didn't I didn't see her losing. Not in her second match back. Not in her second match back, losing the title. No way. <clears throat> and then the main event was the Extreme Rules match for the WWE Universal Championship. Roman Reigns defended against uh, the demon, Finn Balor. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Pardon me. Hmm. Ah, sorry about that. This was the main event. This was an Extreme Rules match. The only Extreme Rules match that they had the entire pay-per-view called Extreme Rules. So they had the stipulation, which anything goes, no disqualification. Of course, these two were going at it. The demon was showing that he's the demon, absorbing blows and coming back with offense. And these two were, you know, just back and forth. We saw kendo sticks. We saw a bundle of kendo sticks wrapped together. We saw chairs. We saw tables. It was just, it was the works. Pretty much, pretty much the works. We even saw the Usos get involved to try to take out Finn Balor. You know, got him with a couple of 
super kicks. Was going to put him through a table, but Finn was able to fight off both Usos and take them out. And then get speared through the barricade by Roman Reigns. And then the unthinkable happened. The, the weirdest, craziest thing happened. So everybody was still down. And all of a sudden, the, the lights turn red and do like the heartbeat that Finn Balor usually comes out to when, it, when he's the demon. Did the flashing heartbeat. It did that like maybe four or five times, which each heartbeat, Finn would kind of twitch each time. And all of a sudden you get the... And Finn Bauer just instantly just rises up to his feet like he's been resurrected and then just starts beating the crap out of Roman Reigns just like he's not even been phased. Just kendo stick chairs just beating the crap out of him. Gets him back into the ring. Now, now Finn Balor's music is playing at this time. His music's playing, which is weird the lights are red they stay red the whole building is red kind of like you know like the theme just everything red gets roman reigns back into the ring gets on the top turnbuckle ben balor does gets on the top turnbuckle getting ready to do another coup de gras And the top turnbuckle and rope snaps, and he falls. <laughs> the same Finn Balor that's done the coup de gras off the top. Millions and millions of times, even posing for however long and has done this finisher millions and millions of times. And this one time that he does it, or gets ready to do it, and the top turnbuckle and ring rope snaps off while he's standing on it. Really? 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 Afterwards, the lights return to normal. It looked like Finn Balor tweaked his knee or something from the landing. Eats one more spear by Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns pins him 1-2-3, retains the Universal Championship. And that is how they end this pay-per-view. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I didn't expect any title to change. But you had that kind of an ending... For this main event match between Roman Reigns and the Demon Finn Balor, that's how you end it? That's the finish? Once again, I don't see how WWE marks can defend this stuff. How can y'all seriously defend this? Uh, uh. Who? I just, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I, I, witnessing that finish just made me feel dumbfounded. That's that's how bad it was. It made me feel dumb. <sighs> and 
And I hope after this, we don't get the Extreme Rules pay-per-view again. They need to retire this pay-per-view. They need to retire this pay-per-view. This was a crap pay-per-view, and it's already bad enough that there was only one Extreme Rules match the entire card. Just like with the Money in the Bank, they need to kill this pay-per-view too. They need to retire it. They need to retire it. Plain and simple as that. All that buildup for the demon, Finn Balor. And that's how you have him lose. Like I said, I didn't, I was okay with him losing. I didn't think he was going to win. I think he was going to get close. But you go through that whole segment of reviving him, his music playing. And while he's on the turnbuckle, it just snaps. Despite him doing this million, 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 bajillion times. That's, that's the finish. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to go play some video games because I, I, I got to take my mind off of this, this garbage. Let me know what y'all think about Extreme Rules 2021. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? What did you like about it? What did you hate about it? All of the above. I'm Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram signing off. I'm out of here. Y'all have a blessed week. I'll see y'all soon.